Hi friends. Today, let's have a glance on the second part of the amino acids. In my first video, we have learned the definition of amino acids, the names of the 20 standard amino acids, classification based on the side chain. And in this class, we will concentrate more on the structures, also learn essential, non-essential amino acids, how they are divided. We will also learn the peptide bond formation. So let's go to our class. These are the few basic points which you need to know before we go in detail into our topic. You know that the amino acids are single units of the proteins. Proteins when they are broken down form the amino acids or we can also define that the proteins are polymer of amino acids. And as you know that the Pro, uh, there are 20 standard amino acids and the amino acids are alpha because they are attached to the alpha carbon. Amino acids are optically active because they contain chiral carbon except glycine because for glycine the side chain is simply the hydrogen as there are two hydrogens glycine is not asymmetric that is why it is not optically active. And you know that the amino acids naturally occurring are more of a, they are L amino acids. They are D amino acids are also occurring in case of some bacteria. You also know that the amino acids are dipolar or zwitter ionic because they contain both positive and negative charge in one molecule. Amino acids, another property is amphotric in nature because they can act as both acid as well as base. As they are amphotric in nature, they have some specific pK values when they are titrated against the acid or base. And the amino acids have specific isoelectric points. It is the pH at which the amino acid do not contain any charge. Amino acids in acidic condition when HCl an acid is added, they are positively charged when base is added more of base is added they become negatively charged in between the positive and negative charges there is a point where the amino acid do not contain any charge that pH is nothing but isoelectric pH you have seen this slide in my previous video this is nothing but the classification of this amino acid. Stay on this slide until you remember all the 20 amino acids in this particular series. Because it is very easy for the classification to remember the classification. Also very easy to remember essential and non-essential amino acids. Because essential, non-essential essential amino acids, they become, they are from valine, leucine, isoleucine, melanin, methionine. Likewise, you can remember. Let's go to this. These are nonpolar amino acid. Glycine is very weakly nonpolar in nature. And these are polar amino acid. And these five are the charged amino acid where the aspartic acid and glutamic acid are negatively charged. Lysine, arginine and histidine are positively charged amino acid. Remember this classification. Then you can learn all the structures and also the designations and also the uh, essential, non-essential amino acids very easily. Now let's go to our basic topic. A very important topic is learning the structures of 20 amino acids. Don't afraid to see these many structures, but they are very, very easy when you understand the logic, how to write them. Here, this is the simple general structure of the amino acid where this group is common in all the amino acid. CH, NH2, COOH. You can see this CH, NH2, COOH. Or else you can also write in CH, NH3 plus COO minus in the ionized forms because amino acids, when they are dissolved in aqueous solution, they become ionized and form zwitter ionic. So here they become NH3 and COO minus. Let's learn the structure of glycine. Glycine is very easy structure where the side chain, the R group, is simply hydrogen. So to remember glycine, just say after me, CH2, NH2, COOH. What is glycine? CH2, NH2, COOH. Or else CH2, NH3 plus COO minus. 
Let's learn the structure of alanine. Alanine is simply putting a methyl group in K in place of the side chain. Remaining is common. No need to remember this structure. CH and H2, COOH is the common structure. You need not remember. Remember only the side chain. Just methyl group for alanine. Likewise, valine. Valine, this structure, you remember this structure apart from the general structure. For the methyl group, there is an isomethyl group which is attached here. Then if you add one methyl group here, it becomes leucine structure. Remember, this methyl group is attached at the gamma carbon. When you know the structure of leucine, you can write the structure of isoleucine. The methyl group in leucine is attached to the gamma carbon. Whereas the methyl group in case of isoleucine is attached to the beta carbon. That is why I tell you, if you learn the structure of alanine, very easy to learn the structure of valine. If you learn the structure of valine, you can write leucine, also isoleucine. This is proline, where it is heterocyclic, like pyrrole group is there. For CH2 groups, but in place of hydrogen, there is one uh, COOH group here. Remember, proline contains NH group. All the amino acids are amino group containing amino acids, but it is amino group containing amino acid. Then go to methionine. Methionine, you remember like this CH3, yes, CH2, CH2 is the side chain which contains a thioester linkage so this is the sulfur which is called as thio group which is in the ester linkage on both the sides ester linkage is there then phenylalanine just simply the benzene ring and a ch2 followed by the basic structure ch and h2 cooh simply the benzene ring and methyl group when you add OH group here to the phenylalanine it becomes another amino acid called tyrosine which we will see in the next slide so phenylalanine just a benzene group will be there then for tryptophan it contains a special group called indole group this is called as indole group to the benzene ring and this heterocyclic group is attached called as indole group to which the similar group like that of the phenylalanine is attached Till the previous slide, they are hydrophobic or non-polar in nature and these are polar amino acids. Cysteine, very easy to remember. CH2SH, CH and H2COOH is nothing but cysteine. When you remember cysteine, okay, cysteine contains a special group called thiol group or sulfhydryl group. Previously, there is a one sulfur containing amino acid which is nothing but methionine. Here, this also contains sulfur, but sulfur is in thiol or sulfhydryl group. When you remember the structure of cysteine, it is very easy to remember the structure of serine. Just in place of SH, write OH. Then it becomes serine. CH2OH, CH and H2COOH is nothing but serine. Add a methyl group to the serine here at this position, then it becomes threonine. Threonine structure is CH3, CHOH, CH and H2, COOH. So these three amino acids, tyrosine, serine and threonine, they are hydroxyl group containing amino acid. Tyrosine, as I explained you earlier, for phenylalanine, if you just keep a hydroxyl group, then it becomes tyrosine. Very easy to remember. And tyrosine contains hydroxybenzene radical. This is hydroxybenzene radical. Serine, threonine and tyrosine contains hyd uh, hydroxyl groups. Aspargine and glutamine are amide group containing amino acid. CO and H2 group is amide group. Just remember like this, CO and H2 CH2, CH and H2, COOH. If you add one methyl group here, then it becomes glutamine. Glutamine contains two CH2s. Likewise, when you know the structure of aspartic, you can write the structure of aspartic acid. Just in place of amide group, you write the carboxyl group. 
CO, CH2, COOH, CH and H2, COOH is nothing but aspartic acid. If you know the structure of glutamine, you can simply replace the amide group, amide group with the hydroxyl group which becomes glutamic acid. Glutamic acid and aspartic acid are acidic amino acids. Then the last slide of the structures, it is lysine, arginine and histidine. All these are basic amino acids because they contain extra amino group. You can remember the structure of lysine very easily, writing 4 CH2 and at the end NH2 amino group is nothing but the lysine to the basic group. And here, this arginine structure is somewhat need to concentrate where it contains special group called guanidino group. This is guanidino group followed by three CH2 groups. Then coming to the histidine structure, it contains a special group called imidazole ring. These are the 20 standard amino acid structures. Pause the video for a while, remember all the structures and you can go to the next slide. Now we will see the classification of the amino acids based on the nutritional requirements. They are divided into essential amino acids and non-essential amino acids. Essential amino acids are those, they are not synthesized in our body. That is why they became essential. That is why they should be taken through diet. Non-essential amino acids are synthesized in our body. Do not remember non-essential amino acids, but do remember essential amino acids. If you remember, you can write the non-essential amino acids very easily. And further remembering the essential amino acids, just to follow the classification on the my previous slide of the amino 20 standard amino acids, these are up to here, tryptophan they are non-polar in nature. Just remember the sequence. Valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, phenylalanine, tryptophan. Then remember threonine followed by all the three basic amino acids. Lysine, arginine, histidine. Very easy to remember. Uh, valine, leucine, isoleucine, methionine, phenylalanine, tryptophan, then threonine which is polar, only polar amino acid and lysine arginine and histidine among the lysine arginine histidine histidine and arginine they are essential amino acids only during adolescence period only up to adolescent period in grown-ups they are non-essential amino acids after watching the essential non-essential amino acids let's see the peptide bond formation which is very important a peptide bond is formed between a carboxyl group of the first amino acid and amino group of the next amino acid, second amino acid. A water group, water molecule is removed in this one, forming a bond between CO and NH. This bond is called as peptide bond. This bond is called as peptide bond. And when the here there is carboxyl group and again it joins with the another incoming amino group forming another peptide bond likewise the carboxyl group again joins with the another amino group forming the peptide bond when multiple amino acids are joined to form a polypeptide chain it looks like this it contains two ends one end where the amino group is free another end where the carboxyl group is free this end is called amino terminus or n terminus this end is called c terminus or carboxy terminus where you can see the peptide bond co nh which are oriented in opposite direction this is co and nh first amino acid second amino acid third amino acid and it goes on like that remember to practice all the structures this is the formation of the peptide bond in just a glance and when you practice these structures it is very easy to remember